Hello friends and welcome to the December 2013 shop tour. This is bringing the year to the end, uh, clearly, though um, as I started these shop tours in 2013 with the intention of documenting the shop month by month and showing what was going on with it and making a record of all the improvements and alterations and changes I've made, I've kind of enjoyed the series, hopefully you guys have too. And I found it kind of motivating to see what's going on and see what still needs to be done and, uh, and kind of push me along. And I'm not quite at the point of saying I've done them more this year than ever before in the shop, but I've finished and gotten more things to a point of substantial and usable con completion than I did in previous years. So um, I think that this is part of the motivating factor and I'm going to keep going with it. So... We'll be shooting another one in January, but for now, let's close out the year and show where the shop where the shop stands now. As I'm filming this, it is December 31st, 2013, last day of the year. So, here we are when we first walk in. Uh, I've got the door closed because it's friggin' cold outside. Um, but when you first walk in the right, I've got this pile here, which are these loose things on the floor and the windows and the panes and stuff. That is still my treehouse pile. The treehouse is... Uh, functional. It has a deck and rails and stairs and things like that. Um, but I haven't quite finished it. Next summer I'll bring it to a close and I'll finally get all this crap out of here because I'm ready to win this space again. But I need to, I need to finish the treehouse to get this out really, or I just put it in the attic and have to move it, and that's where it's going to live until the treehouse is done. So that's what I have right there. Um, there are my entry badges to various woodworking shows I've done in the past couple years, and this shelf here with a bunch of chargers on it. That's an improvement from what I had for chargers, but still a miserable failure. And you can see the wiring isn't very good and it's inconvenient and I need to work out a charging station. Uh, but as we come down the wall, there's the garage door opener controller, which I have to just rip out and throw away. As you can see, there is, there's no powered garage door opener that broke years ago and I gave it up to win the space. My sprinkler controller, which is dear to me, and I wish it was somewhere else, but for now it's going to stay right there. Uh, fire extinguisher, kind of important for the shop. Tapering jigs, my Craig jig, I've got jigs kind of hanging on the wall. It's not the most convenient place to reach the jigs because there is this stuff against the wall, but because it's an unused section of wall and the jigs are not used that frequently and they're not that heavy, I can reach over and grab them. That's kind of where the jigs live. I should consolidate them a bit more, but that's what we got going on the wall. Here down at the bottom are the last two of these red units. I used to have all of my red drawer units in a big stack right here, and I moved them out months ago. These are the last two that are going to get moved back in the shop. Uh, that's all my table saw accessories and stuff in that big bin. I will ultimately make a cabinet that fits in there to store all that so I can reach it, uh, but that's where it is now. Um, and here's my table saw. One thing I've been thinking of, just to go t get tangential for a minute, is I've got... What does it go to? 31. I've got a 32 inch capacity on this saw. And I've also got track saws. So when I'm cutting sheet goods, not that I don't cut sheet goods here. I mean, you can see here's some OSB. I was cutting on it yesterday. Um, but when I'm cutting big pieces of sheet good, I don't use the saw. And that 32 inch capacity takes up quite a lot of space. So I had seen in one of Matthew Teague's articles for fine woodworking when he was describing a one-car garage setup, which is frankly what I have, um, he had taken a table saw and he took the the 48 or 52-inch rails and cut them down to be 32-inch rails so that the saw would fit. And what I'm actually considering is taking this and cutting it to be, I don't know, maybe 26-inch? Just get a couple of inches off of it, which would allow me to bring the wall, the saw that much closer and free up that much more space over here next to the saw. I think if I were to go like 26 inches, anything bigger than that I can do with the track saw. I, I don't think I'm giving anything up. I want to mull that for a while because once I cut these things, if I decide to change it, I'd have to get a new new rails and probably a new fence assembly. And that's not going to be too cheap. This fence, I actually really like it. This is the, I don't know what they call it, the T2. The, it's not a Beesmeyer, but it's the Delta cheaper version of their Beesmeyer. And having used a Beesmeyer, I find it almost as good and no need to replace this fence. I actually really like the fence and the saw, so I don't want to damage it and then regret it. But I'm thinking that I could I could use those couple of inches of space 
And uh, if I don't find myself using the really wide capacity anytime soon, that's what's ultimately going to happen sometime next year. Uh, connected to the saw, I don't have incredibly... Well, I have decent dust collection. Considering it's a contractor saw, it, it collects dust very well because I have it all air sealed with the exception of the back, which I've not gotten to yet. Um, but I've got it connected to my rigid cyclone over there because I haven't got permanent dust collection set up yet. Um, but as we move past the saw, I continue to have these two cabinets here, my pull-out cabinet and my bastard tool cabinet. You'll notice one of the handles in the bastard tool cabinet is missing because I was finishing Katie's quilt rack and needed a handle and that got given to Katie's quilt rack so I need to pick up a new handle for that. These cabinets are at their height based on based on oh based on the lumber rack that's empty above them now. So once I get that lumber rack off the wall, they're gonna move up to a much easier height. You know, they're gonna be like over counter height and then I can store more things beneath it. The space beneath it is fairly unused. But you can see as I'm clearing big things out uh, I've got lots of empty space here around things, and as I call these things together and organize them better, I'm hoping to win a lot of open space in the middle of the shop. But there against the wall are a bunch of toolboxes with different types of screwdrivers in them, and those are simple, two of them, simple metal hose coil things, I don't know, for your garden hose, and I've got extension cords and air hoses on them. I find they work fairly well. They're a pain in the ass to get to because they're tucked underneath here and there's usually stuff in the way, but it does keep them out of the way. Um, there's some extra, you know, 12 2 wire. It's time to get that out of the shop. And back in that corner is my Veritas powered sharpening system, which is doesn't have a home right now, so it's back there. You can see this uh, extra polystyrene is left over from the bathroom fan I just installed. I just need to get rid of that scrap. And here is the portable rolling cabinet that my miter saw has been on forever. It still has my drill press on it and I need to find a home for the drill press in here. I don't want to put the drill press back in the attic. I'll have to make like a very narrow stand for it I think but I've not gotten to the drill press yet. But this cabinet is going to be taken apart. It should be one of my next projects in the garage. Um, you see in the back it's just open. I just needed to get a couple shelves to recreate that. And the front has these Veritas or Lee Valley metal drawers. And this is all made out of MDF and you can see that these drawer units are individual units. So there's four of them stacked together to make this. Um, so I, I hope there's not glue in there and I can just unscrew it. I don't remember, I made this about a decade ago. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna take these drawer units and throw them over here underneath the miter saw stand. Um, also, these red drawer units here are going to go underneath the miter saw stand so that will take use of this space here. I'll get to the miter saw stand in a minute and I've got a separate video on that if you're interested. Um, so we come back over here, I've got a lot of my Festool stuff. What I need to do is get these cabinets and move them over and then get these guide rails and mount them on the wall to the left in the space I clear off and get these couple loose things mount on more shelves underneath it and get all this up and, and tightened a little bit. The planer here is going to stay on this mobile stand for the time being. I'm not completely satisfied with it, but it works and it moves around very easily. I need to do something a little more organized in the bottom, maybe put some shelves in it or something. And the stand, while it's rock solid, is a very inefficient use of the space underneath it, so I need to probably just improve this stand by putting some sort of organized system underneath it and make use of that space underneath it because actually for using the planer it works out great. Uh, come around to this back corner I've got the rest of those shelves and they're not all going to fit under the miter saw but some of these will go under the miter saw and I'm not 100% sure where the rest will go but that corner was kind of out of the way and a lot more usable than where they were originally. I've got some shelves set up along this wall which are somewhat permanent. Um, Here's my bench with a desk slab on it. Uh, there's always crap going on in here. So we come around to this corner. Uh, this is one of the projects that I am most happy with from the year is I made these clamp racks and I mold them along and threw this design together. It was very simple and I've been very happy with the way it works. It has worked out. The back is three quarter inch OSB. Those support pieces are half inch plywood and then the top pieces are five quarter by six pine and they've been ripped a little bit to allow enough room for the heads of the clamps on them 
and it allows, if I pull them forward, it allows the clearance of the different heads. Uh, these are different size clamps, but it allows enough room for big clamps everywhere, and I've got a mix, mix, mix match of Jets, of Bessies, of uh, Jorgensen's, and frankly, having used them all, I'm going to say that I think the the Bessie Revo 2 may be my new favorite. The Jets are very nice and solid, and I really don't have any complaints about the Jets. I love the big head. I love the trigger. Um, the original Bessie K-bodies, while they were fantastic when they first came out, in comparison to all of the modern clamps, they suck. Those tiny little wooden handles are torture to use. Um, and frankly, that is my complaint about the Jorgensen. You can see some of the Jorgensen's back there. The cabinet, I think they're cabinet maker clamps from Jorgensen. Um, they're great clamps. Nice big head, solid, smooth movement. But that wooden handle is too smooth and it's just a pain in the ass to use. I'm finding that the, uh, the K body, I wish the head was a little bit bigger, but I like the handle on it. I like these black spacers they have. Um, I've been very imp impressed with the with the K bodies, especially the Revo 2 version, which you see there, versus the original K body, which you see there. A world of difference. And again, while the original K body does not compare to any modern parallel clamps, the Revo 2 is right in there with the Jets in terms of the the nicest one. Um, and you can see I've got a mix of them all, so it, they're all functional. They all work. Uh, they all clamp. And anyway, so these clamp racks tight in the corner like this have gotten all my clamps, all my parallel clamps up and out of the way and made it a lot more feasible to reach and use them during clamp up and they're relatively close to the bench so you can see this slab here, I've still got my calls on it this had probably a dozen parallel clamps clamping it up and I was able to just take them right off the clamp rack and bring them right onto the piece and keep going uh, in the corner here, I've just got some scraps of wood leaning up. Those mounting, those, uh, we'll call them hooks that are on the wall, I have a fan that drops in there, and the, the base of the fan goes against the wall and slides behind there, and it hangs the fan off the wall, and that lets me in the summertime open this window and put the fan on, and it gets a cross draft right across the shop. So that's not the most efficient use of that space, but it's probably going to stay there because it's really valuable in the summertime. Um... Here we've got my joiner. I picked this up during the year. This is a 50s vintage, 1953, 1954 Delta Potbelly 8 inch joiner. Um, I really like it and I really hate it. The outfeed table has given me a lot of problems being aligned. Uh, if we come over here, you can see the shim there and shims there and I don't know if you can see there's a shim way up there um, and even with all these shimmings and feeler gauges and flat edges and everything I've not been able to get it perfect it's pretty close it's acceptable but if I plane too much I do get uh, wedges um, and it's just been kind of frustrating I think I've made the decision that I am going to ultimately, hopefully next year, but maybe the year after, who knows, it might be a couple years, <laughs> they're not too cheap, but I'm ultimately going to replace the joiner and the planer with a combo machine. Um, for the longest time I've been of the opinion that having the two separate machines fit into the space better because the combo machine is a bigger footprint. Um, and I will finish up some more of this organization to get a better sense for the space in the shop before I pull the trigger and I need to save up a whole bunch of money before I pull the trigger also but I think I'm gonna go for a combo machine and go for wider capacity of the planer and hopefully it'll tuck underneath there I have to play with that a bit but what you see now is designed to work around this present tooling and that's my miter saw and the miter saw extension wing and the placement of the extension wing was set so that the joiner would fit underneath it. And then the miter saw bench is fit to provide the miter saw even with the extension wing. Um, and that's all just two slabs glued out of timber strand. The extension ring is actually the original timber strand uh, panel I made up to demonstrate whether or not it would be acceptable for a workbench. And that is about, mm, let's say, four years old, plus or minus. 
and it's still perfectly flat. I've been very happy with the way it has held up and not warped or anything. It's been up in this rack for years. And that's not under abuse. You know, I realize I haven't used it as a workbench, but I was worried about them, their capacity to stay flat. And it's only been supported by two, two rails. It's had lots of weight on it. It's not cupped or bowed or anything like that. So that's what the wing is made out of. And you can see here, the wing is a little bit off the wall so that it lines up more with the fence of the miter saw. And now the miter saw is a project that I designed or I envisioned this bench when I was first tearing the wall apart years ago. So what you see behind the saw is a framed, it's basically a window that's been framed and I never cut through the plywood. So right on the back of the plywood I've got one inch of polyacrylate insulation spray foamed around to air seal it. And what that allows is for this nice deep pocket that is uh, roughly five inches, five and a half, by the time you factor in the three-quarter OSB, something like that, five and a half, six inches, because uh, it's a deep wall. The wall is double two-by-four stud. Um, and I can take this saw, and it just clears the wall. And if we come around here, you see how much of that saw is behind the surface of the wall. And that dramatically reduces how far out into the room the saw has to go, frankly, by the depth of the wall. So that's five, six inches I'm saving in terms of the, the saw projecting out. And the space is only about nine foot ten. It's not even ten foot. So every inch counts, and that's been, been really helpful. When I close the saw, I bring it back to 60 degrees, it's behind the front. And this this bench here is 19 inches off the wall. And while 19 inches is a lot, if you compare it to the miter saw I had previously was a DeWalt 12 inch slider. Fantastic saw also, I only got rid of the saw because I didn't have the room for it anymore. And the DeWalt, to be on a bench with the same kind of capacity, the DeWalt was in a bench 37 inches deep, and now this bench is 19 inches deep. So that's almost in half I've cut the depth of the bench. I've saved 18 inches uh, I think that's right, I'm doing the math in my head. Um, so, been a bit of work and a long odyssey to get it done, but I'm incredibly pleased with this setup for the miter saw. And in the week or so it's been set up, I have already used it quite a bit, and uh, it's back to being one of my favorite tools. Um, up here above, simple wood storage. I went with these open wire shelves to let everything breathe so I don't need to sticker the bottom. Uh, I like the shelves because it lets me hold a lot of small pieces and scraps. You see the upper one doesn't have the shelves, it's just the supports. Um, that's limited to bigger wood up there. Electric, which as I've said many times, was stupidly installed by me too low, and you see how it's interrupted the bench. So I may or may not make a removable bench piece that covers it when it's closed. I don't know. For right now, the miter saw works with just the one wing, so we're going to use it like that for a while and see what happens. Uh, here's my bandsaw. Still not happy with it, but with the Carter guides, I will say it actually cuts now, and it's a usable, functional tool, so I've been getting some more use out of that. And then back in the corner, sheet good storage, jig storage, just a pile of stuff, that pile of materials that I don't want to get rid of, but don't have a really good place to put. So, as we close out, that's the shop tour for December of 2013. It's been a good year in the shop. We finished this wall, we finished the floor. Uh, when I say we, I, I finished the wall, I finished the floor. I got a lot of stuff set up and it's beginning to take the shape that I've always wanted it to take. So good year for the shop. I hope you've had a good year in your shop too and we'll see you again in January.